Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of In the Kitchen, bringing great coffee home to you. I am the Kitchen Barista. First a little housekeeping, I want to talk about the new name of the show. We've renamed it from Kitchen Barista TV to In the Kitchen. I think that uh, more aptly reflects what we're doing on a regular basis, you coming into our kitchen. So I hope you enjoy many more episodes of In the Kitchen. Today, as you can see, we're talking about grinders. Specifically, which grinder is the best one for you to buy for your house? There's a couple criteria that you should be looking at when you're uh, making a grinding purchasing decision. What I want to do first is I want to give you an overview, just a brief overview of the types of grinders that you uh, are typically found in houses. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail on each grinder, we'll do that in further episodes. Uh, we'll actually do the deep dive into how uh, these grinders are used, how they work, how to clean them, and, and so forth. But today I'm just going to give a, a brief overview. I'm also not going to touch base on like the full-size burr grinders that you see in your coffee houses because unless you're a roaster or really into coffee, you're not going to put one of those in your houses. So I'm going to start over here with uh, the one that uh, is probably the most popular that you see in an average kitchen, somebody that grinds. It's an electric or blade grinder. Um, it's a blade grinder because that's exactly what it does. <clears throat> There's a blade in there um, that as it spins, it grinds the bean. This one right here is a burr grinder. It has a couple more features than a blade grinder, which is just you push it down and then it goes and you have to watch your, your uh, stopwatch or something and timing as to uh, how coarse, how fine you want the, the beans as you go there. But this is actually the burr grinder. It's got a couple more settings. I like the burr grinder because it's almost like uh, Ronco, those rotisserie chicken commercials. Set it and forget it. That's kind of what this is. You put your beans in here, adjust the dial, Turn it to the number of cups, press start, and let it go. They shoot out into the chute, and you put your, uh, your coffee in the coffee maker. That's pretty much set it and forget it. This one here is a manual grinder, hand grinder, or coffee mill is what you may see um, them advertised as. Um, and this, unlike these two, which is electric, manual. Pure and simple. Coffee grinding at its basic. Just turn the crank. That's a hand grinder. So, which one of these babies is the best one for you to buy for your kitchen? Well, as with any purchasing decision that you make about an appliance, and you should really look at coffee grinders as another kitchen appliance, because that's really my opinion what they are. And when I buy a kitchen appliance, there's two main criteria that I look at. Price and usage. First, we're talking about price. If price is your biggest concern or factor when buying anything, especially uh, today we're talking about grinders, talking about grinders, then you want to go with this. You want to go with an electric blade grinder. Um, you get these probably about 15 to 20 bucks on average, um, and they will do uh, not the best job, but they do a decent job uh, for, for grinding your beans, especially if you're making the transition from uh, buying ground coffee to buying whole beans. Use this is more preferable. Buying beans and using electric grinder is more preferable than buying ground coffee to get a better fresh one. So if you're really not sure what you want to do, if you really you know, want to do the grinding or not, 15 to 20 bucks, get a blade grinder, you won't regret it. This here is a burr grinder. Um, th this particular grinder cost me about $50 and it's done a really good job, I'm happy with it. Um, as you do reading out there, about $100 above and below is, is a good uh, gauge as to whether you're going to get a, a better quality burr grinder or not. Your ones over $100, typically the difference that you'll see versus the ones that are under $100 is the, the quality of the parts inside, whether you have metal parts inside, uh, whether they, the chute and the hopper are glass versus plastic. The more expensive ones, you'll have glass in there, right? The, this, like I said, is only 50 bucks. So this is plastic and uh, this is plastic. The more expensive ones, these parts will be glass. And then inside, you'll have more metal parts uh, versus plastic parts inside the actual uh, burr part of it, whether it's a flat burr grinder or a conical burr grinder, a uh, conical burr grinder, um, there'll be more metal parts. So that's the biggest difference. Um, cleaning, as you get more in expensive burr grinders, uh, they also make them easier to clean, uh, where parts can pull right out and clean versus uh, this one, it, it, it takes up. It's not the easiest to clean, but it, it, it's it's doable. Uh, and this uh, hand grinder, you can get these anywhere from this one was twenty five dollars. 
up to two, three hundred dollars, depending on how big you want to get it um, and the quality of the parts of the metal in here. The second factor that I look at in buying a, an appliance and you should look at when you're deciding about a coffee grinder is usage. How are you going to use the grinder as well as what is, uh, how often do you brew coffee at home? So you want to be looking at two different things. If you don't brew coffee a lot at home, you're one of these that likes to go out um, and stop on your way to work or, or like to just hang out in the coffee house because you like the setting and that's where you get most of your coffee and you maybe just on the weekends brew your own coffee at home. Uh, a, bird, uh, a blade grinder should be fine for you. You just want to make sure that you're uh, pressing the button down uh, not too long for the type of grind that you're doing. If you're uh, using an automatic, uh, pr uh, automatic drip, which is typical, you probably want 15 to 20 seconds is what you want to be uh, pressing that down for. If you press that any further, you run the risk of, of uh, burning your beans because it generates heat in there. Um, also, uh, a blade grinder will be adequate if uh, automatic drip is what the, you mostly what you brew. <laughs> stumbling over my words here. If you're mostly brewing an automatic drip. A blade grinder should be adequate as well because all you really have to know is to, uh, like I said before, just press the button and make sure you're not over grinding your beans. If you brew coffee at your house on a daily basis and or you make more than just drip coffee, uh, you have a French press to use it once in a while, you have an espresso machine that you like to have an espresso or you, know, you like to do a red eye which uh, is a combination, you know, it's espresso on the bottom and then drip coffee on the top. If you want to do any of those combinations, this is what you want to get. No doubt, hands down, you want to get a burr grinder um, because it's got a number of different settings on them. You can go from fine, which is for an espresso, to all the way to, to coarse, which is what you want for a, a French press, and a medium in, in between. And with, within each of those settings, there's different ones. You can hear it cranking. Each, each little sound of that is a setting. It starts from a very tiny circle to fine to the larger to coarse. Uh, that's what you want, as well as the cup sizes. So if you're do if you do it regularly, um, as well as multiple types of brewing methods, this is hands down. Like I said, this is what you want. The hand grinder. I will get a hand grinder. Um, if similar to what I had said about a blade grinder, if you brew your coffee on the weekends, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a grinder. Um, then maybe, you know, it's just it. That's, what I would do. That's what I would do, uh, get the hand grinder for. Or, what I would get a hand grinder for is if you like to entertain a lot and have guests over and uh, make some coffee. It's a very nice conversation piece when you pull this out uh, and you put the beans in the top and you start to grind. Um, it, it's, trust me, it's quite the conversation piece when people look at you like, what is that? What are you doing? And you're grinding the beans and, you know, you're actually hand grinding the coffee beans for them. Uh, it also sends a statement to your guests that, hey, I care about you, I'm going to hang around you. So that's what I would do here. This uh, is more of a, of a novelty more than anything on this, uh, a hand grinder. Now some purists will uh, only use hand grinders because of its. Uh, there's no electric parts, so it's all based on them and they feel like they can control it better uh, you know, by looking in the, uh, in the burrs there, in the grinders, going there. Um, so that's why you would want this. Those are grinders. If you have any questions as you're looking to purchase a grinder for your home, please feel free, email me, submit a, a, a comment on the, on the website. I definitely want to hear about it and I want to help you make that right decision. So now is the part of the show where we move into coffee facts. Coffee fact for today is next to oil, coffee is the second most exported product in the whole world, which uh, shouldn't really be surprising because you think of all the coffee drinkers out there in the world, it's, uh, it wouldn't be that surprising, it's not to me. But an interesting coffee fact there. So that wraps up this edition of In the Kitchen. Until next time, I am the Kitchen Barista.